Welcome to the Cross Canada Spotlight. I'm Mike Arsenault. Every week we take a look at a handful of the most interesting and entertaining stories produced across the Global News Network. We're in the middle of the hockey season and Canadians across the country of all ages are lacing up their skates and hitting the ice, including one man in BC who is on the precipice of his 10th decade on earth. Meet Henry Unger. It's another game day in Abbotsford and Henry Unger is gearing up for his third game this week. Let's play hockey. <laughs> Getting everybody on these 55 plus teams pumped up. Is he an inspiration to you younger guys? <laughs> yeah, I thought I was an old guy and I got here and now I'm a young guy. Okay, we're going to do it. Let's go, Henry. 1939 was the year when Henry put on his first pair of skates. As I remember, they cost $3.75. And he used magazines for shin guards. He loves to share stories of a simpler time for the sport. He says, well, when I started playing street hockey, it was with homemade sticks and frozen horse crap. <laughs> so <laughs> Most people don't try to make a comeback at age 88. We're having fun. And we're getting exercise. Henry actually had to teach himself how to skate again after taking the last year and a half off. I literally had to hold on to the boards so that I could turn around and skate backwards. Good shift, Henry. Thank you. He's quite a bit older than most of the players, but out here he's just one of the guys. When he goes out in the ice, he takes his uh, hearing aids out. So we can trash talk and badmouth him all day long, and he just smiles at us. He still has the skills. He may not be blazing up and down, but you do not want to take him for granted. So he plays good hockey. He checks you pretty hard. You know, he doesn't give you an inch. Now we know that we can keep playing all the way to 88. Once in a while, the seas will part, giving Henry a chance for a goal. I have to admit that on occasion, they, they give me a little extra room. Three assists. Not a bad game at all. He may not win league MVP, but there's one guy who's always a lock for most inspirational player. Henry! Jay Durant, Global News. I'm really impressed with how strong Henry's balance is on his skates. You can tell he's been an athlete for most of his life. If you just focus on his movement, he doesn't look out of place at all with guys 30 years his junior. Keeping a sense of play is so important as we get older. Speaking of play, we've all tried to balance a basketball or soccer ball on our finger like a Harlem Globetrotter, right? Well, one BC man has turned that skill into world-renowned recognition. It all started about 14 years ago. While still living in India, Sandeep Singh Kala realized he has a very particular set of skills. It's a grip and fast movement. In the highly competitive field of sports ball spinning, Kala is near the top. He has set seven different Guinness World Records. Four have now been broken, but he still holds three titles. Because I can't see, so that is so much harder. Sometimes I get a time, if I go outside in the public place, I just take a ball and spinning. People around me, they're watching and shoot my videos. <laughs> So this is the Indian national record book. That's called a Limka Book of Records. It was just for fun in the beginning, but as Sandeep improved, he started thinking maybe he could achieve some level of distinction. There was uh, nothing to do for me, and I wanted to be famous, and I wanted to become a famous in the world. Of the top, the 10 Guinness World Record. His unique talent has landed him many guest spots. He's been featured in the annual Guinness World Record book. Wow. He has a YouTube channel documenting his entire spinning career. The big hand. All of his performances and the unveiling each time a new Guinness certificate arrives in the mail. Longest duration spinning American football on one finger. He's auditioned for America's Got Talent and hopes to get on their stage spinning three basketballs. But this time they'll be on fire. It would be amazing. You have never seen it. Even I want to set a one Guinness World Record on the stage of America's Got Talent show. Being a Canadian citizen now, Sandeep has dedicated the records to everybody living in this country. And of course, he'll be going for more. It's an entertaining journey that he's been able to share with a lot of people along the way. I feel very proud. Even my family, my villagers, uh, my, my country Punjab, 
and my Punjabi community here, they're proud on me very much. Jay Durant, Global News. I've tried to do that before and could never last longer than just a few spins. Same thing happens with the hula hoop. It's always an embarrassing display of a lack of proper coordination on my behalf. Switching gears to going green and a look at Canada's first certified green community in Lethbridge, Alberta. From the outside looking in, Sunridge appears to be like any other neighbourhood, with single-family homes, sidewalks and streetlights. But the subdivision, which sprung up in 2006, was recognised as Canada's first green certified community. When looking at developing Sunridge, we wanted to see in what ways we could sort of push the envelope and start to introduce more green practices. Practices that Abby Slovak with Opportunity Lethbridge says include sustainable infrastructure through storm ponds, the use of recycled materials and solar installations. As well, the homes in Sunridge had to meet a certain level of energy efficiency through things like insulation, appliances and windows. We gave incentives when builders were able to achieve different levels of the Built Green program. Um, that resulted in us having uh, over 100 homes in Sunridge that were built to that Built Green standard with most of them um, reaching that gold level. While the environmental benefits of the community are difficult to measure, Slovak says it certainly left a mark. It has definitely influenced how home building happens in Lethbridge. Sunridge resident David Scott needed a home on the west side to be close to work. The avid birder says the location was a no-brainer. Sunridge Park just has a lot of trees, a lot of shrubbery. It's got the pond and the wetland. I think I've tallied in the last uh, two years, over 130 bird species. Rosemary Jones, who moved to Sunridge in 2009, says she looked at several neighbourhoods across the city. I just kept coming back to the Sunridge subdivision, to the houses here, um, because they were new for one thing, but also uh, the key was the fact that I'd never seen um, a sustainable community before. Now, more than 15 years after the neighbourhood was born, things have evolved. There was a change to the building code and some of the things that we were requiring back then became standard in the code. But at the time, this was definitely cutting edge. Eloise Terrien, Global News. The most hopeful part of that story was Abby's quote that green initiatives the community followed back in 2006 are now standard for all new builds. That leaves me feeling optimistic about a green future across the country. Staying with the environmental theme, what happens to chopsticks at restaurants after you use them? Well, one Alberta company is reusing them. Aaron Singleton's a busy guy. I'm making coasters, about 85 chopsticks per coaster. That's right, chopsticks. We shake them up, we see which ones we can use. A Calgary company that takes used chopsticks and recycles them into all kinds of things. We do wall decor, cutting boards, charcuterie platters, crib boards, everything from coasters to countertops. Getting the chopsticks from restaurants like this sushi spar. Nowadays there's lots of global issues like environmental problem. So we're really glad to recycle the chopsticks. Now coming in from about 85 Calgary restaurants. More than 100,000 of them every week. Sort through and go through all of these bags and bags of chopsticks. The stuff that was going to be in a landfill is now essentially being given a second life. And since opening a year ago, also giving a second chance to people hit by the pandemic. Darren was a concierge in a downtown hotel. Obviously that business took a hit and I was furloughed for eight months couple times and then kind of stumbled across this. I think this is an awesome thing. I jumped at it and this is great. The company is now up to seven employees, but with COVID continuing, they're still facing problems like disruptions in their steady supply of chopsticks. It ebbs and flows, right? Every time one of our partners closing down or are they just going to take out. So yeah, it's, it's a challenge for us definitely throughout the lockdown. Hoping more restaurants will join in always looking for new possibilities for products. I'd love to take other people's ideas and say, that's a challenge, let's make that. No limits, it's only gonna grow from here. We're making a difference one chopstick at a time. Global News. The end of that story is a great ASMR video. The sound of the chopsticks was very rhythmic and soothing. Our last story of the week is courtesy of Global News Weekend's editor extraordinaire, Nikki Knight. In fact, she puts Cross Canada Spotlight together each and every week. 
And this story is about an Ontario farm that is proudly useless. Useless Farm began really probably about four or five years ago. We started with some guinea hens and then we got some chickens. I think the first one we got was Brad, which was very unfortunate because he is miserable. No, 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 no. And then I blinked and we had emus, alpacas, mini donkey and Gary Goose. It's a slippery slope. Perfect, he's done charging. I came up with the name Useless Farm because nothing on our farm has a job. Everything on our farm is just here to live out the rest of their life in relative peace. We really just let the animals be themselves and they have a little glimmer personality. Look at the clover hanging out of your mouth, you baby. We have Keith, our one alpaca that has terrible anxiety. Why does it look like Michael is posing for his new Christian Mingle profile picture? We have Michael who is absolutely simple, not a thought in his head. Is this turning into maybe a near-death experience? Possibly. Karen, our emu, who is absolutely miserable and was named Karen before Karen was a thing. So I don't know if I manifested that. I need to have my head on a swivel every single moment of my life. Stanley, who is our other emu, who is the sweetest angel. And we have Gary, who just likes, he's just happy to be involved. Thank you. The reason I started doing social media was really, there were so many funny, really obscure things that happened here. And I wanted to share that with people. Uh, I wanted people to laugh and smile uh, at these things like I do. I consider myself so privileged and so fortunate to be able to do this. I like to laugh with other people and I like to bring smiles to other people. And during the past couple of years, we've definitely needed it. I didn't expect it to get this big at all. Michael, you poor sweet thing. You don't have a thought behind those eyes, do you? When I saw that Michael Bublé duetted a couple of my videos, I I mean, he's just such a good sport about it. Oh my god, I laughed so hard. <laughs> you didn't pick a great hiding spot. The reaction from people online has been so amazing and I've been like just surrounded with love from people. It's been so wonderful and so supportive and I'm so appreciative of that and that other people find it funny. That really means a lot. Michael Buble stole my joke. I was going to say something similar and he ruined it for me. I will never drink another bubbly again now. But kudos to the useless farm. That's it for the Cross Canada Spotlight this week. Be sure to watch Global News Weekend Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. on the Global TV app and Amazon Prime Video. Oh, 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 oh,